Our relationship with the queer youth community goes back a long time. We get referrals from the county and we accept kids um, regardless of whatever orientation they may be and we in fact encourage that and I think because of that we have a great we have a better reputation and we're able to provide services to a broader range of youth. It's favorably accepted by all of our community partners in fact we're here right now talking to you because of um, uh, our focus on bullying this year with a large segment of component on, on uh, LGBTQI uh, and how they can often become the victims of bullying. One of the things we've been able to do is raise awareness about the needs of the queer youth community and convince people that it's an, an area that's worth investing in. We can address the whole kid by connecting with, with their school um, with their primary care providers, we're trying to be on site now. Um, networking with Encompass and Diversity Center and their STRANGE program. So my vision for Haven of Hope was to serve a variety of youth. And before I even started Haven of Hope, which is in 1998, uh, I wanted to provide a safe environment for youth uh, that came to us with a variety of, of issues. Uh, depression and suicide relative to not being accepted by your family if you're LGBT, um, etc., cetera, uh, is a significant factor in, in, in helping to get um, families to uh, accept uh, the people, again, our people. Uh, one of the uh, needs that I, I discovered was that many of these youth were coming from homes and environments where they were not supported. And so the thing that makes us unique is that what we try to do is identify what the need is of, of each child and then to try to provide the services and support them through whatever it is, uh, any challenges that they might be uh, going through. One of the other things that I think we could do to con continue to support this community, especially youth, is to um, do one of the things that we've done before, obviously, continue to invest some financial resources. But also, I think what's important is really raising the community's awareness of this, uh, the youth community's needs. You know, these girls come to us with so much pain and hurt, and they, they come to us from an environment where they're just trying to survive. And our job is to try to provide an environment where they're going to thrive. Well, this symposium could create a much safer environment for LGBT students by what we are planning to do is expanding on our student panels. And we're sort of on a campaign right now to have a um, scholarship fund. We also have um, staff like Kristen who have had extensive training um, and we participate paid an ongoing basis, you know, monthly meeting to share resources and ideas and um, up our game in terms of working with transgender youth, which is, you know, kids from 2 to 18. So that's just some of the ways and there's always room for more.